Welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. Thank you, Shauna, for joining us on this interview, this We Choose to Thrive interview. Give us a little bit of your backstory of what you went through and what brought you to today. Okay. Well, I was sexually abused uh, by my grandfather. And I was abused from the age of 5 to 17 years old. And I think the only reason that I probably told when I did, I, I actually, you know, became pregnant. Uh, it was a few weeks shy of being 18 when I had my daughter. But I remember the last time um, I was pregnant and he tried something with me. And that's when, that was the end for me. For whatever reason, you know, the screaming in my head actually came out verbally. And that was the last time. But it took that many years to get to that point. So your child was your grandfather's? Yep, yep, it was my grandfather. <sighs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, uh, my mother was a single mom, and so she worked, you know, sometimes up to three jobs. So a, a big part of I was raised by my grandparents. So, yeah. So it was, you know, normal for me. Uh, I know uh, I hear this a lot, and it was really nice for me to hear. And yeah, I even agree. It's normal. When you grow up in such a young age with being abused, you don't know. That, that you know you're being abused you sense. know I, I appreciate you sharing that yeah because for me um, I beat myself up for a very long time because I didn't understand that anybody else went through this kind of thing yes and mine was at my at the hands of my father but you I, I beat myself up because why didn't I run away why didn't I leave it but there was beatings, there was verbal abuse, there was all kinds of things, and the sexual abuse was the least of the the traumas. Yeah. You know, and and yet, how do you reckon with that as an adult and understand how it all happened and why you couldn't leave from it? Yes, and that's what a lot of people just cannot understand. You know, why, why did you stay so long, or how did you allow this to happen so long? It's such a complex thing, and there's so many layers. Mm -hmm. Right. So what are, where are you now in your healing journey? Oh, in a place I never thought. I mean, I always knew that I would be here, but I never really fully could, did believe. Um, I have actually been spending, well, I say majority, I've always been very curious, uh, you know, I, I've probably spent the last 15 years really going through a healing journey. It took me a long, long time because I was very, but I knew there was this inner strength in me that just said there's something, There's I just can't just sit and be a victim here. I can't just let this continue to take over my whole life. And whatever that inner drive was, that inner fighter inside me is really what saved me. And in, in a way, I listened. I've always been a person that observed things and just listened. And I spent a lot of time alone with myself. And I really, at the time, didn't understand all that. But I'm really glad that I did listen because I was able to heal myself in a way that I always hoped for but didn't know I could actually achieve. And I will say, in my life, I feel very free. I've had to change everything in my life, that included leaving a marriage, um, completely really retraining my brain, and all this stuff, and all that stuff. But I am in a place now where I am ready to speak. I am ready to be an advocate here. Um, I've been sitting in the background for many years, I think they're like the rest of us, hoping and waiting for someone that I could relate to. One person that I remember seeing, well, for one, Oprah was big for me when she came out and right. said about her abuse. And a young lady named Erin Murren. I remember seeing her and I was like, oh my gosh, someone that is such a light. She went through this abuse with such strength. And that, seeing this young girl, really sparked something 
even deeper within me thing that's me I can do that and from this journey I started with therapy once I broke out I started with uh, just therapy but from that I felt like I needed more I needed more I needed a little bit push I needed so much more than I was receiving and on my own I end up going and trying multiple things for my healing most of us do Yes, and I think you need to. I know I don't think you know. I need. I know that you need to be able to, you know, try many different things. Try. I always say, get yourself uncomfortable. Sometimes I've done things that are uncomfortable, like dancing, like choreograph, or whatever it could be. And I was like, oh, I feel like a fool or whatever, but I did it. And once I did it, and it's just those little baby steps. It took many years, I think, for me to recover. I felt like sometimes it took a lifetime. But if I didn't take make those little baby steps, I wouldn't be where I am now. No, and I'm very free. That's very right, and that's yeah. true. Because as we we go through the stages, I've interviewed many ladies and that have gone through these things. And some use art, some use dance, yeah. some use poetry, some use writing. Yeah. There is no one way that is right, and maybe it's a combination of different ways. Yes. And and we do, for the most part, most of us feel so alone, we don't know that there's so many of us out there. And yes. what I've discovered as I begin to finally say, okay, this is enough, we face self-destructive tendencies. Yes. Because our self-worth is, is, has been eroded from childhood. Mm-hmm. And as we move forward through it, and we just suddenly discover that we are not alone. Yes. Any of us out there, and that's what this whole thing, We Choose to Thrive, is about, is yeah. bringing our voices together to show others that you're not alone. Yes. And together, we can get better, and we can heal, and we can thrive, and we can make it be a force for change in our world. Oh, I just get chills when you say that because that's exactly how I feel, you know, and why I really connected with you when I saw you. I thought, oh, yes. <laughs> so that gets it, you know, because I feel exactly the same. Yeah. That's so cool. So what would you tell a person, because we know that this issue is not just exclusive to women. It's no. exclusive to men. It's also for men, yes. So what would you tell somebody that's just starting out on this journey of realizing this is not the life I want and I want to get better from it, I want to heal, what would you say? The hardest part for me actually was don't quit whatever you do because it's going to get harder before it gets better. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is when I first broke my silence, I thought I was going to go to my grave with this secret. I really, truly did. I was 25 years old when I finally spoke to my mom and told her. And I thought once I had broke my silence to my mother and kind of freed that I would have this weight lifted off me. But no, I actually had a quite a panic attack and you know, I kind of got into a deep depression for a little bit and I got, it was really hard for a while. But then I just kept going and I kept doing these baby steps and as hard as it was I just knew I couldn't quit because I knew if I quit it this would take over me so I would say just hold on don't quit you know because it does get a little bit harder before it gets better but I promise it gets better with my healing I now have eliminated my depression my anxiety my I will I think I'll always deal with things in ways always we are always but for the most part, you know, it gets better and healing is possible. You know, don't let this scare you. Don't let the, um, the first part of you coming out with your healing because it can be a little scary at first. Very time. scary. Very scary. And yeah, just don't give up. Just keep doing it. It may seem like it takes forever, but I promise, I promise you, healing is possible. And why I'm doing this is because. I've had so many people come to me, my family and friends and just strangers asking me, how did you get to a place where you are now? And I've shared with what I've done on my journey and you know, other people have done that and now I've seen the effects that I have. You know, I, I want other people to feel what I've felt. I mean, healing is possible and I know a lot of people think that it's not, but it really is. And if I can get through everything that I did and you can get through what you have and you know that there's healing, we just have to, you know, I promise, just keep going. It's a day by day thing and I have to say that. It is. I published my book about a month ago telling my story and 
Yesterday I received a phone call from a family member. Mm -hmm. It was pretty devastating. And I today has been kind of the waterworks. And at the same time, each day since the day that I published my book, I've had people come to me and say, wow, thank you. Thank you for having the courage to stand up. Yes. And yeah. And what I've discovered is it's such a huge thing that that there's many of us. We're not the only ones by any stretch of the imagination, and it's our responsibility to heal. Yes, it is. It's our story, and it is our responsibility. It's our story. It's nobody else's story, and even within a family. So the, the issues came from family members, where, and what I said was, this is my story. This isn't yours. If you had four people standing on a street corner and saw the same vehicle accident, they would all tell it differently. This is my story, and I intend to make a difference in this world. Either you can let it color your world and destroy your world, or you can step above it and say, I will continue to heal, and I will continue. So I call those trigger points because there's things that come before us. Yes. And other family members don't want to hear many times those things. They yeah. don't want to face those issues. So so you leave it and bless them to yeah. put your own way. But you know within your the deepest part of your heart you had to, you need to continue to move forward because this is a big world and there's a lot of people affected. Yes, there are. And I think, you know, people that have never um well for one been through abuse but they don't understand the complex complexity even of family. Family is because a lot of family don't either believe you or they don't, you know, because whatever ways that they've been brought up to think or whatever it is. So family can be the most difficult just, you know, for yourself. Like what you said, this is my story. And I, I say a very similar thing to mine. I just had to do the same. And mine as well are a little hesitant on what I'm doing. They're not really sure. But, you know, it's like I'm not here to bash my family, but this did happen, and this is my story, and I'm here to tell because I'm also, you know, I know I'm not the only one out here from other people uh, saying thank you for saying, thank you for speaking. You know, that's exactly what feels my soul. Like, that is why I'm doing what I'm doing because I, we need to continue. We need people, more of us that are out there speaking and being a voice for the voiceless. That's right. Yes, very much. So proud of you. And I'm so proud of you, too. <laughs> I mean, really. You know, I don't think, I don't care what age you are. As long as you break your silence and you speak and what you're doing, oh, you know, just I just get chills. Absolutely. You're a beautiful soul, and thank you for starting this book. This is like something I saw doing, too, and I, you know, I when I saw you doing this, I was like, oh, my God, i got to connect with you because I think it just takes a lot of strength and it takes a lot of courage and... Well, it's, it's been one of the most amazing things that has happened through this series, this We Choose to Thrive series, yes. is that in interviewing every woman that I have interviewed, and, I, and I've had men starting to approach me because they have their stories too, mm -hmm. but right now I've kept it to women. Um, I have learned more about myself. Yes. Yes. When they t when even our interview today, I learn little pieces of myself that I haven't understood. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And every story I've heard, I've been in awe at the courage of young women in their twenties that have the courage to speak up when I'm sixty and just starting to speak up. Yeah. And at the same time, I realize that there are many people who have gone to their grave who have never spoken. I thought that would be me. Mm -hmm. And I thought that would be me. Yeah. And the time has come. One of my best, one of my very dearest friends calls it the last taboo a problem here in the states. It's a it's a global problem, and it it happens. And we there's other kinds of abuses within religions, within all the other things that have, but but within the family circles, this has been kept under squished, kind of squashed down a lot. Oh, a lot. And yeah. it's still happening in massive proportions. And it, it needs to stop. At least the awareness and our biggest message 
and what we're doing here is we can't we may not have been able to stop this from happening for anybody else but yes. we can send a message that we can heal we can thrive we can be a force for change in our world yes and we are stronger together mm -hmm. we can we we need to unite it's like so touching and it's so such a healing that's happening it is it, you know what they don't realize when people you know talk to me and you know give me thank you for being such strength I'm like you don't understand i'm getting the same back from you mm -hmm. hearing someone else's story uh, you know and having that person be able to be vulnerable with you and trust that you're going to take that you know sacred secret and just listen rather than judge i mean yeah it's, it's beautiful. very cool yeah. this story was brought to you by the woman i love at www.thewomanilove.com. If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, growing strong, and uniting can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world. We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal. But the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself, for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this We Choose to Thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www.thewomanilove.com. Also check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.